Okay. So you start off in the minors and then in 83 at age 21, that's when you actually go into the majors. Yeah. That's when I actually um, get to the major leagues after 81, you know, 81 year I was in Lynchburg, Virginia. Um, and I came close to quitting after that year. And the organization said, give it another year. Cause I thought I might've made a wrong decision. And I gave it another year and I went to Jackson, Mississippi in the Texas league. And I hit 34 home runs and stole 45 bases. And that's when I realized I became a ball player. Um, I realized that I had something and I might have a chance. And then I went to AAA the next year, 1983. I started off the first month in AAA and then the team got off to a bad start and they brought me up to the big leagues in 1983 at the age of 21 years old. Right. And you had a, a hell of a year. Like you said, 26 home runs, seven triples, 74 runs batted in, 257 average, and you became the National League's Rookie of the Year. Yeah, but I got to tell you about this. You know, I wouldn't have never became the National League Rookie of the Year had it not been for my coach, Jim Fry, because I was supposed to be at the ballpark. I got off to a rough start, and I was supposed to be at the ballpark at 1 o'clock, and I didn't show up to 3 o'clock. So my hitting coach, Jim Fry, got up in my face when I got to the park, and he looked me right in the eyes, and he was this little guy, and he said, if you ever want to be a great Major League Baseball player, you'll be at this ballpark every day early. He goes, I'm not going to ever wait for you again. And that was a really turning point in my career right there. That's when I realized more than anything how important coaches are. That's when you start to understand it's not about your talent, it's not about who, how great you are and how great you can be. It's about how you're really going to proceed yourself to be what kind of player you're going to be. Either, either you're going to allow coaches to help you go this way or you're not going to pay attention to them and listen to them and your career will go that way. So, so many guys had great potentials, great talent, but they never listened to anybody. And I think that's what's the difference in my self sitting here today was listening to Jim Fry and that kicked me off to go forward. So every coach that came along had a big impact in how my career was going to go of moving forward. So I'm forever thankful for so many different guys like Jim Fry, uh, Bill Robinson, my hitting coach, Davey Johnson, manager coach, uh, just so many different people. Bobby Valentine was a third base coach, Bud Harrelson. It's just so many people that had a, a, a big part of what helped me get to where I need to get as a player because you could you can have the talent, but if you don't have the extra kick, the extra go, you cannot reach that other place. It's a different level uh, of places where players, certain players, can go. That some will stay at one level, but in any in all sports, but then some can get to that next level, and that's that great level of playing. And when you can arrive like that, it's because of everybody that's had an impact on your life gro uh, going through that process. Well, that rookie year, you actually got into it with some of your teammates on picture day uh, with the team captain, uh, Keith Hernandez. Well, that wasn't into that a physical year. Altercation. <laughs> that wasn't. Oh, a, was that the next year? That was, no, that was, I think, I think that was later in the, later in my career, you know, picture day with Keith Hernandez, you know, I think it was in, it was oh, in the okay. middle of me negotiating my contract, talking about my contract in 1989, I believe at picture day, uh, one of those, yeah, one, one of those years. Um, and, um. Come to find out he had said something to the media about I didn't need to be talking about my contract situation. And the media came back and told me, so I confronted him about it. I said, it's none of your business. I told him, it's none of your business, you know, about my contract. I, I said, I never got into your business about your contract negotiation. And he was talking about, well, I didn't need to be focused on negotiating a contract or anything because I had one more year left. And after the year, if that wasn't going to sign, I was going to become a free agent. So... He, he, he went down the wrong road talking about somebody else's contract and negotiation and what they should be doing and how much they should be getting. And because I never did that for uh, uh, towards any player. Um, that's his business. He's got to feed his family. So and he kept mouthing off at picture day. So I, I just rushed him, you know, and I was like, dude, I, you, you have no idea where I'm from. I'm from the streets. And, you know, I might have this baseball uniform on, but I'm a street guy. I grew up in the streets and everything. And when somebody's got something to say, look, we. We're used to throwing these up, putting these up and, and, and getting down. And so, you know, I rushed him in picture day and, 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 you know, all the guys knew I was about to do it, the teammates and stuff. So they, they ran in and beeline me to cut me off, you know, and, you know, so I wouldn't really get to him. But, um, you know, we made up after that because we teammates, you know, it's, it's going to always be some in-house stuff going on 
It's just a matter of can you just squash it and move on and, and get down to business and take care of your business as a team and do what you got to do. Well, during that altercation, didn't you say that you'll bust that little redneck in the face? No, that was Wally Backman. That was my second baseman. He was chirping off in the. Oh, okay. He was chirping off to the press about me too, and um, and they came, and uh, they came to me once again to tell me, and they said, "Well, you know who it was? Who, who's always chirping? Who's always talking?" I said, "Wally." They goes, "There it is." They said, "I didn't want to say it, but I already know." And <laughs> I mean, you live with these guys for like eight months out of the year. You know who's who and everything, and so uh, man. He chirped off in the media t about me too one day, and and I, and I told them, you know, I'll, I'll bust him in the face, you know, if, if he really want if he really want to feel that, you know. But, you know, like I said, we moved on from that, you know, we squashed that. It, it, it's part of, like I said, what happens when you play sports.